what you're thinking. Steel cut oats? I mean, why? I kind of like my current breakfast routine. Well, let's talk about those routines because a lot of them are like bad boyfriends. They make you feel great in the moment, but then they always manage to make you feel like garbage later on. You know what I'm talking about. Like the, I swear it's breakfast routine. It's sugary cereal. Or the still sugary cereal. Okay, that one's a little better, but packaged oats pack in so much extra sugar and sodium that you don't really need. Oh, no, 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 no. This is never what you should choose. I mean, really, what are we doing with this diet soda? This does not undo what you just done to yourself. <laughs> okay, that's no better. Really? <laughs> really? Or... Maybe you're feeling fancy, so you go for what I call the intellectual hipster. This is the one where you stop in at a corner cafe to get your coffee, and while you're there, you think, I'm going to get that Danish, or, no, how about that pastry? Hmm, probably should get something healthier, like maybe a, no, it's probably not that healthy. Maybe I should, yeah, but guys, I know how we're really eating this. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And this last one, I shine the spotlight on that breakfast that we've all seen people eat, but we just don't talk about it. I call it the shameless. With 135 grams of sugar, this little dandy can put you on the express train to diabetes. So no, get that out of here. That one too. Now these breakfasts are either terrible for you or they won't keep you full for very long. And the cost of these really add up over time. But not with steel cut oats. Not only is it nutritious, but if you add a little protein, you can easily make it three hours without being desperately hungry and snagging that tiny Twix bar from your coworker's cube. I know you're doing it. And the cost? Just about 23 cents per serving. You'll need just a few things to make steel cut oats. So we'll start with your pot and spoon and your measuring cup and of course water, dark brown sugar, some salt, and of course, your steel cut oats. And because I'm not the cooking expert, I'm gonna send it over to BG and he'll explain to you how to make steel cut oats. Hello everybody, this is the BG and let's get cooking. First step is to bring your favorite heavy bottom pan to the stove top, turn the burner on high, and add your water. At the end of this sequence, there's gonna be a table with the different proportions of water, sugar, salt, and oats for different ser serving sizes. In this case, I'm making 10 servings, so I'll be adding 8 cups of water. If you were looking at the package directions for steel cut oats, they would recommend using 10 cups of water. I find that that makes the end result a little too porridgey. So over the years, I've been reducing the amount of water I've used down to 8 cups because I like the way that it turns out better. So if you're the kind of person that does not like steel cut oats or the texture of steel cut oats, try using less water. You might like it better this way. The other two things we need to add would be the sugar and the salt. I like to use a teaspoon and a half of sugar per serving for a total of 15 teaspoons or 5 tablespoons and then a pinch of salt per serving or a total of a half a teaspoon for 10 servings. I'm also using dark brown sugar for this. I don't like adding sugar to the things I cook, but if I do, I'm going to add something with the most amount of flavor to it. So other substitutions, you could use something like molasses or honey or maple syrup, but I'd almost never use just plain white sugar for making oatmeal like this. But after all that comes to a boil, you'll be adding your oats. I'm using a quarter cup per serving, or a total of two and a half cups. So I'll stir that in. I'm also going to turn the burner down to slightly below medium, and then set a timer for 20 minutes. This is where, when you try this at home, uh, to get the temperature and pacing correct, you have to do a check to see if you have the right temperature. At about six minutes in, I have no sticking on the bottom of the pan. It just, it's, I'm just stirring it, and it's just bubbling away. If you started to encounter sticking in the bottom pan in six minutes, you need to set the burner down a little bit lower because it's cooking too quickly at this point. At the second check, though, at 14 minutes, that's where I'm going to start encountering some sticking on the bottom of it. That's totally fine. What's important here is that there are no black bits on the bottom of the pan that would be burning. You'd have to actually start completely over again. But in this, it's just darker brown. Totally fine. I have no, no issue with that. At the 20 minute point, I'm going to turn off the burner and then do another check. What I'm looking for here again is that there are no black bits coming up as I scrape the bottom of the pan. And as you can see, most of the, the bottom is sticking at this point. It's totally fine. Uh, it's just a darker brown. And it actually adds more flavor to the end product. 
But to help combat this, I'm going to let it sit on the burner and set another timer for 20 minutes and just let it sit here. Since this is an electric cooktop, there is still a bit of heat left in the electric coil and it's going to let this steam out and loosen up all the things that are stuck to the bottom of the pan. So after letting it sit for another 20 minutes, when I stir it again, you can see that there is nothing sticking to the bottom of the pan. Uh, I'm just right back down to the silver of it, and it actually makes cleanup a lot easier because then you don't let it soak. You can just, you know, scoop this out and you're ready to clean the pan. But that's it. It's ready to serve. Now for me, I make this every Sunday night so that we can both have a quick breakfast in the morning by just microwaving it. I prefer it with a little bit of peanut butter and almond milk. The peanut butter actually thickens it up quite a bit, and so you need to add something to thin it back out to get it to the same texture. You're also probably wondering, where's the 10th serving at? Well, that's to show you how the sweets has it. She enjoys it with either a pecan or a cashew, and then some mixed berries on top. Both ways, you're getting a complete protein. You're either doing a legume with the oats or a nut in the oat. Makes it an excellent choice for your breakfast. Keeps you full for several hours and is very healthy. But that's the BG, keeping it square. And here's our recipe for steel cut oats. As BG mentioned earlier, we use a slightly different recipe than the one that you'll find on the package. So if you like the look of the oatmeal in this video, uh, go ahead and try our specific recipe and then modify it to your liking. We've included one, five, and 10 servings here. The batch that you saw in this video is 10 servings because that's usually what we make for uh, two adults for five days a week. As far as where to buy steel cut oats, you can start with a smaller package at the store just to see if you like them. Um, but if you really wanna save money and it's something that you really like to eat, we recommend buying in bulk. You can buy a seven or eight pound bag of steel cut oats on Amazon for about $20. And that usually lasts our family, which is two adults and one small child, about six weeks. So we've also included some buying links in the description of this video if you want to check that out. So go ahead, everyone. Enjoy some steel cut oats. Let go of all those terrible breakfast habits. It's okay. Dump them in the garbage can. One at a time. All of them. That one, too. Yep, let it go. And that one. And that one, and that one, and wait, hold on. We're not animals. Get your recycling can out. Yep, yeah, there, there we go. And you've done it. <laughs>